Hello, Esther. Thank you for being here. I just I just finished a uh, one hour session tutoring sixth grade girls and uh, remotely. And so I'm thank you very much for being willing to delay till later in your day. That was very kind of you. Okay. Hello, Meg, welcome. Now I've got to find my office hours notes. Or if I remember right, we were just putting them in the Contributhon document, weren't we? I hadn't taken any significant notes. So let's, uh, Oleg put his notes and let's put today's notes as well. So it, it is. Oh, okay, heading to April 30th. Hello, Cynthia. Thanks for joining. I'm just drafting the agenda right now. Hello. So I, I don't recognize 540-207-3161. Hi, Mark. It's me. It's Kristen. Oh, hi, Kristen. Okay, now I recognize. All I had to do was hear the yeah. voice. That's great. That's cool. Using multimodal technology. I like that. Even better. Yes. So that probably means you can't see a shared screen, can you? Uh, no. Okay, that's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll do mostly talking. I think, yeah, that's great. Okay. All right, we are at the time. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and let's let's start our, our session. Thanks everybody for being here. And if you've got screen screen available, here's the proposed agenda that I've got. I'm open to others. So Mark, did you want to record? Oh, it's recording or recording oh, it is. is on. Yes. I'm sorry. Okay. Excellent question, Meg. They're very good. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yes, it says, yeah, the recording. I controls, think we're going to want this one. Yeah, well, I, 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 I hope so. I hope it's useful, but we, we definitely Maybe. record. Yeah. All right. So welcome to the concluding session for our She Code Africa Contributhon. A uh, reminder that we adhere to the Jenkins Code of Conduct. It's April 30th, 2021. We are nice to each other. We're kind, considerate, and, and decent and good. Don't be rude, don't be crude, etc. Mm -hmm. All right. So what I'd propose is let's talk about the end of the project, what worked well, what didn't, etc. Get some retrospective feedback. Uh, talk about what's next. 
and uh, I'm open to other topics. What other topics? So Meg or Kristen, are there topics you'd like to bring as, as mentors? I specifically want to hear from our she coders, whom I think are a fabulous group of people, what could have um, made it a better experience for them. I agree. And so I, and I oh, think, and I think that's inc included in what you've got. So super agreed. And Kristen, anything particular in addition that you'd like to request? Um, no, I, I can't really think of anything right now. I think kind of similar to what Meg was saying, I really want to hear what we can do better or how we can help um, incur like kind of talk about maybe continuing on with certain things or like what can we do to help push through this, maybe the pull requests and stuff that were not accepted at the time and just kind of like help get that finished, like get us over the finish line. Great, okay, yes. All right, so what I propose is let's let's give voice to to each of our each of those who's here with us. So I'm going to stop sharing and just take notes. And Esther, I think you were first in the meeting. Would you like to tell us both, or maybe what we could do is you start, you unmute, and we'll ask you some questions and get some insights from you. Oh, can you go second? Sure. Onyinye, would you be willing to go first? Yeah, good evening. Hi, everyone. Hi, uh, I'm actually Hi. just joining. Yeah. Uh, sorry for joining late. Yeah. So uh, what am I supposed to So, to So what we were thinking is if you'd be okay if Meg and Kristen and I just asked you some questions to help help understand what we might do to make the experience better for you, what things would be, what things worked well, what things didn't. And we'll do this with each of the people in turn so that, so that we get some hints. So one of the things that I think was, well, how did you, how did you overcome some of the technical challenges you encountered? Are there things we could have done to help you be more successful with, with some of the technical problems that you encountered? Okay, thank you for that question. Um, so uh, actually, um, the questions were technical, some of them. However, I, I was able to, to make more research. I was able to stop the internet. I actually, to be honest with you, I had, I had sleepless nights because um, I, I needed to get things right. So I had to keep like, while working, I, I could have um, hundreds of tabs open because I, I keep looking out for, for uh, help and also for information that I, I need to, to work. So it wasn't really easy. Uh, what you could have done, you actually did what you were supposed to do because um, the task, the tax, the, doc, the document, were, they, they were really helpful. The steps in the document were helpful. The only thing was the fact that we needed to do more research. Yes, we needed to do more research. And I actually did like many research. I watched YouTube videos. I looked at documentations. Yeah, so that's it. Um, Onyenye, and you did a marvelous job, by the way. Was it fun to do that research or would it have been better if like at the first meeting, somebody had walked through those initial steps of getting everything set up and doing your first builds and you'd been able to watch that and would that have been easier for you or would it have taken out the fun that you got with all the research? So, so Onyinye, Meg's question I thought was a good one is would it would it be better if we started the session with an introduction that showed and maybe recorded even the steps to do that those initial tasks task because, because the tasks were pretty pretty detailed but i assume there were things you bumped into that were really complicated or that you, that as you said caused you sleepless nights and if there are things we could do to help reduce sleepless nights and have a better have a good experience i'd like that to so should we show a demo uh, of the tasks in the first sessions. 
for me, the the document was well detailed enough, like you said. Yeah, having sleepless nights uh, is just my own personal initiative because uh, I have some other things to do during the day, um, and I needed to meet uh, up to the expectations. So for me, the tasks were well detailed, and um, that's why uh, we have mentors that for adventure we 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 have maybe we are blocked while following the task. We should screenshot and then show to our mentors so they could help. So for me, I'm, I'm cool with the way the tax were detailed, yeah. Great, thank you. Thanks very, very much. Um, and maybe what we do is, Meg, are you okay if I think what we do is let's rotate the same question through each of the each of the participants, and then we'll come back for more questions. Would that be okay? I like that. Okay, so Cynthia, sure. or, or no, Esther, we had said you would be second. Esther, uh, are there things that where you encountered technical problems, and if we'd done something different, we could have reduced your technical problems? Um, hello, can anyone hear me? Yes. We can, yes, go ahead. Okay, so the technical problems that I had were um, not really, um, I think not really problems that you can foresee because I think the only technical problem that I had with um, Jenkins was the whole research issue, which I figured out we need to fix. But I think what could have gone better would be um, some, like I already said in my um, article, some um, helpful links to documentation that would introduce Jenkins and all that because I felt like like it was it was cool and I understood the, the task and the steps and all that, but I kind of just um, jumped into um, downloading Java and Maven and all that. And I didn't really understand what any of them did, but I was just following the steps. So, and it was during when we had to start um, creating pipeline and all that, that I now had to, I started going through the documentation. So if we could go through the documentation and in, in, in at first instance, I think that would have been nice. Very good. So, so in, in your case, if we had provided as say, for instance, as links in that step, links to documentation yeah. or videos, because, because many of them, in fact, some of them even have entire courses around some of those topics, right? The, when we had you create a, an initial pipeline, truly there's a, uh -huh. a, a full day course that I've taught in the past on how to do that kind of thing. So I've spent eight hours in a classroom teaching people what we described as one or two lines. So, so absolutely, that's, that's a very good insight. Sorry, I'm sorry, I, I kind of missed you. You said you have um, a full day course. Yes, yes, so, so we have a full, I, I've taught a full day course in the past on what we, we listed in that steps document as two or three steps. So use Blue Ocean, create a pipeline. Yes. And I have, mm -hmm. I have truly spent, Meg, I think we spend six hours in that class, don't we? Yes. Yes, I think uh, this was the the YouTube video, wasn't it? Well, that's that YouTube video is a condensation of the course. So so we've we've done oh. even more than that, and so so it's and it, I I I am a little embarrassed here. We could have potentially sent our you participants through the through the self paced course. I'm yeah. not sure that it would have been as successful as what you already did, but we could have done that. So. Let me, because the Linux foundation. Yeah, it could be like an option, yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, good good insight, Esther, thank you. Yeah, very good. Okay. Um, Esther, anything else before we go to Cynthia? Um, no, no, nothing else. Okay, Cynthia, you wanna be next? So the, the question is, what could we do to reduce technical problems that you encountered? Uh, thank you, can you hear me well? 
Yeah. Sorry, say that again, Cynthia. I missed what you said. It, like, can you hear me well? Because I'm currently using yes, yes, I can hear you just great. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, I I think the uh, so maybe the internet connection was the biggest one. I don't know if I can say uh, it was a is a technical issue, but yeah, like um, attending some meetings was so hard for me. Like I had to reload every time. Um, but I think it's on my side. That's something I should work on. Um, also, um, when making, uh, like there was a pull request I, I met and um, one of the contributors say that, um, I don't remember the name, but he'd say that he should have done it another way, which uh, looks different from what the task was asking for. So I was confused. I was actually spent time working on that pull request and yeah, it looks like I have to close it. So maybe it would have been better to, um, yeah, like communicate with other contributors to just um, make sure they know what the what we are doing, or maybe suggest something that we should have done before. Um, yeah, I think also for the code review, um, it was kind of yes. Yeah, again, some contributors were not. Uh, that fast to give their review or they left some review and never came back to to, um, to just see the status of the PR. So um, also that would have been better. So apart from that, I'm really happy for the for the documents that you provided us um, at the beginning. It was really helpful. It was clear. So yeah, we just had to like, um, as Onyinye said, do some research on how like the behaviors of some arguments code examples which was really fun on my on my side i learned a lot by just reading other people's articles using stack overflow um yeah thank you so much thank you so you mentioned and, and i'm i'm now curious because we've seen it before sometimes internet issues get in the way when we're trying to do these multi-continent experiences, right? Here I am sitting in Colorado in the United States and you're you're an, an ocean and a continent away from me. So so that's yeah. that's no shock. Um, do you think it would have been more effective if we had used Slack instead for for asynchronous communications without without even bothering with these meetings? I mean if, if we had said, oh, we're not going to do meetings, we'll mentor just by Slack, do you think that would have worked for you or not so much? Uh, not, not really. I really love the meetings. So I wouldn't say that uh, that one should stop. But uh, like for other meetings that I usually um, have with other people, I use Google Meet and it really worked for me well. So I don't know why Zoom is always the problem on my side. So I would prefer um, Zoom or I don't know also, but I don't think Slack uh, video call would be better for like a group of people, but Google Meet was, yeah. Um, I really prefer Google Meet. Good, okay. And, and Meg and I and Kristen, actually all three of us have access to Google Meet very readily. So good insight. I didn't, uh, maybe one of the things we ought to put on our list, Meg, is that we, intentionally test and do it do the first meeting half in zoom and then everybody drops off and try half in google meet google Me yeah and see which one is the better technology for that particular group good idea right for does everybody um do all of do all of you have access to google meet yeah i feel like it's free like yeah if you have yes. a google i do Yes, yes. Okay, and it, and it may be that that the Google Meet infrastructure is just better in Africa than the Zoom infrastructure. I I, I truly don't know, but I think it's it, it that would be quite believable, right? It could be that they've just got better equipment there than Zoom does. Good, good. thank you. Very good insight. Okay. 
it's worth a try, right? That, that's, that's a really good point. <laughs> yeah, so schedule the first meeting to include both. So uh, now to, to reinforce that, one of the comments from one of the mentors was, hey, sometimes audio was poor. And one of the things we need to remind mentors is please don't turn on your video camera because it makes the whole experience worse for those who are remote, right? Those who, who maybe already have a, a, a connection that isn't great, using video now makes it even worse. Yeah, so Mark, uh, over here, I, I actually prefer Zoom. I use Zoom a lot and it's been working fine. So I think the challenge um, Cynthia had was just internet. And um, I think um, Google Hangouts, uh, if we use it, we may not be able to record. But here on Zoom, it could record. So. And Onyinye, I apologize, I didn't quite catch that. So you were saying that Google Google Hangouts or Google Meet is better and I missed the part describing the, the, the further details. Could you say that okay. again? Okay, I was saying that um, over here, I use Zoom and it works fine for me. Yes, uh, it's definitely was um, internet issues from Cynthia's side. So it's not like Zoom doesn't work uh, in this part of the continent. Yeah, and um, the limitation in using using Google Meet is the fact that we may not be able to record. Yeah, but here in Zoom, we could record for items. Yeah. Ah, good, good point. And and that's where. Uh, so your note was that in Google in Google Hangouts or Google Meet, we may not be able to record. The, the nice thing there is that, that Meg, Kristen, and I have access to a Google Meet account that can record. So we could overcome that because CloudBees provides us Google Meet. So we could, we could do that. So very good. Thank you. Um, because I think, I think recording the sessions has been helpful. I don't think anyone has had, I know when, yes, when yes. I did a mentoring session with with one, and for me, it was very helpful to know I could record it and she could refer to it later. Choose. Great, so let me, <laughs> let me take some notes there. Okay, good, all right. So next question, all right, so we had, what could we do to reduce technical problems? Um, how about a, a more open-ended question? Are there other what other problems would you would you like to what other problems would you like to have improved? So Cynthia mentioned more prompt reviews by by maintainers. That that was sort of that's the kind of thing. So what other improvements should we consider? Or, or this is me being being rude again. Sorry, Kristen. Did you have a question you would like to ask? Sure, it's all good. I kind of bring up kind of a, maybe a, a follow up comment to that one about getting improved or reviews by maintainers. And it's like, I try and remember maybe I know that we've made some announcements on the Jenkins channel that uh, they're, you know, that this was the contribute thought was happening. Um, but maybe we should have, because some of the repositories, like, you know, Mark, Meg, and Angelique, me, we don't really have commit access to, or we're not really the maintainers of that particular plug-in. Um, maybe we should have done a, and I actually think Oleg did a good job of this at one for the JFrog plugin is like do a reach out specifically to the maintainers and say, hey, you know, this is what's happening. Um, there's going to be some pull requests made for, you know, some documentation. We'd really appreciate, you know, you being able to look at it. And I think that might have helped speed along some reviews. So maybe that's something we can try right. to do a little bit more targeting a reach out to the plugins that we knew were going to have some improvements because unfortunately it's kind of actually one of the things about open source too right is sometimes it takes a little bit longer to uh get things merged <laughs> because a lot of people are doing it you know in their uh free time or maybe you know they haven't looked at it in a little while so so it's it, the pace is a little bit slower than if you were working you know as it as a full job or a full-time job or people are looking to merge things right away. So that is kind of a little bit of the give and take for open source that it is a little bit slower, um, but maybe we can do a little bit 
more of a targeted effort to let people like let the maintainers know that this is coming. Right. We could have used um, the maintainers to help too on uh, source gathering. Because that was when, when yeah. they first went to write the new stuff. It's like, where do I get information? And it's like, yeah, you know, welcome to open source. That can be interesting. But we <laughs> tried to, and I, because I think I forget which one. There was one plugin that uh, we'd identified as high priority because we get so many responses. But it turned out we couldn't right. find anybody who knew anything about it. And I think it was Ondine who was stuck there. It's like, well, yeah, you know. <laughs> right. Um, so we could have made sure that it's they that they, you know, right. even if it if we missed a couple of the very top ones to get some that where we had active support. Um, that's another right. question though. Um, the question I noticed in the comments about using um, the Git chat group versus Slack, um, and that the that people found the Git channel sort of intimidating, and we didn't really use it very much. But a lot of these other people were not on the Slack channel. Should we make sure that we get these other people on the Slack channel, or should we work a little bit more to get the mentorees comfortable using the Git channel? Yeah, and and I think I think well. So I I open that question to Esther, to Cynthia, and to Onyinye. I'm assuming that their preference is Slack rather than Gitter, and I think that's because the Slack user interface is a better user interface than Gitter's is. Um, can, can the three of you confirm that Slack is preferred so long as we, one of the mistakes we made here was I just just today invited Kristen to the Slack channel where the mentors were talking. Mind you, we've been a month doing this oh. and I didn't invite Kristen. So, and then- Oh my gosh, the, okay, I was like, <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> yeah, it's, sincerely and sometimes sorry. I felt like I was like, what's like, happening? It's all good. <laughs> Well, and, and that was and that was a terrible mistake, but we had the same thing with one of the participants that I realized, yeah. oh, I didn't invite her to the channel where we were having these conversations. She could have benefited significantly by seeing the conversations. So so yes, it, it was that's a communication mistake, right? And communication so clear communication channels and and maybe what we would say is and confirmation they are working. Because if we had done in one of the meetings, if we'd done in the first meeting or the second meeting, hey, everybody, each of you needs to connect to Slack and send me a message that shows that you've got access, we would have, we would have solved many problems with something as simple as that. Sorry, taking notes. All right. Um, Kristen, any other questions you'd like to ask? Sure, so one of the things that I noticed is a recurring theme is that we have sometimes in order to even figure out, you know, the startup guides, it's a lot of going outside of maybe the Jenkins official documentation. So my question is, did you find anything um, kind of out in your search that would be interesting and significant to pull in, like to make sure it's documented at, in the official Jenkins documentation so that, you know, maybe people in the future or who are trying to do startup tasks aren't kind of all over, like searching out and looking at Stack Overflow. Um, is there any gaps or in, that we're missing or any anything in particular, if there's links or things that you found helpful, it'd be helpful to see them. You can send them on Slack or send them to Mark directly so you can put them in the document. But that, I think that's my big question is, what are we missing? <laughs> or what would have been more helpful to get you started? Well, that's a good one. I like that. Okay, so what what did you learn from other documentation that we should include in the standard documentation. I like that one a lot. And rough examples are even a good thing. Um, Onyinye, do you want to do, you, are you willing to, to answer that question or share with us some of your insights? And then we'll, we'll ask others. Oh, please come again with your question. Sorry. Sorry, so the question, the question was, what did you learn from other documentation like Stack Overflow or like reading blog posts 
that we should consider including in the standard documentation and that uh, to general topics is probably all we could ask for. Um, the, the other documentations I, I used or I looked out to was, was just because everything was practically new to me. So I needed to, to read from here read from this other source to compare and actually reduce what I'm looking for. Yeah, so the documentation uh, in Jenkins are okay, but then uh, personally, I needed to understand more about the plugins. That's why I, I needed to hear from other people that have used the plugin. Yeah. I see. Okay, so what you, what I think what you were saying is that you, your task was specific to a particular plugin and there was no avoiding that you were going to have to do research on that specific plugin. Yes, yes, yes. Right. And, and that, and I think that's, that's very practical of you because if we do all that research in advance, we we've done the whole project we've done most of the project so so that feels like okay i'm not sure that's avoidable sure. okay good that's true that's a good that's a good point but it i guess they, like making sure that you know we weren't <laughs> it's that re documentation i guess like you said saying mark that makes sense but well but but now now i think let's take the same question to to esther and then to cynthia because yeah. they may they may have had a, a different experience so esther to you um, are there things that you discovered from other documentation that we should consider including in the standard Jenkins documentation? Um, let me see. I, I don't think, I don't think so. I don't think so. Everything, everything that was, that I found outside, there was an example or two in the um in the documentation i don't think so i think what i mostly looked out for was um more examples more um um use cases on stack overflow and other and other blogs on issues that people were facing and then looking at their own code looking at their own um pipelines and all that so i don't i don't think so no there's one I can think of at this moment, but if I if I do um, think of one, I'll let you know. Well, and you you already said one. You said examples, and that feels like a place where we conceivably could have said, "Hey, here I know we have, for instance, Meg had pointed us to the pipeline examples repository um, early on. I'm not sure if it had the examples we were seeking." But it was a it was a, a an excellent resource that we could have included in the steps in the in the task to say, hey, here's some good samples. Right. And the stack yeah. information on each of these there. I don't know. I mean, there's I can almost see a project where somebody just tracks stack flow on these different steps and watches for some juice to come up because there was some really good stuff there. Right. OK, good. All right. Thank you, Esther. So Cynthia, same question to you. Um, as you had to learn from other documentation, are there any things you'd say, ooh, we should include that in the standard documentation? Um, uh, so I feel like examples would, would have been better. Also, um, there are some terms that were being used and uh, as a beginner, I was like, okay, what does this mean? And that was making me go and search for like, what is what what does that mean? So I don't know, maybe trying to, uh, you know, yeah, consider the beginners also who are trying to understand what that um, maybe plugin is doing and making sure that the terms or the, um, yeah, the terms that are being used are, like easy to understand for beginners. Yeah, I think that's it. Also like more description, I think um, on what the plugin is doing. Yeah, but that's for my side because I was trying to understand everything. 
Uh, so I had to like go to look for articles that people have written to understand more on what that target doing. So yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So I I really you 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 sort of cause me to, to light up, to, to get enthused about the thought because Meg and I have in the past had conversations about glossaries and the, the Jenkins glossary where those terms are, is not always obvious or readily accessible. What does the word pipeline actually mean in Jenkins, right? And what does job actually mean? And what does, what does task yeah. mean and step? And each of those words has a relatively precise meaning that that you probably now understand, but at the start you certainly didn't didn't know that step means this and task means this other thing and argument. Very good, thank you. Actually, I think this uh, this is another place though. If we'd given them a chance to take the self-paced pipeline class, it would have put it in context because also that's always the problem with a glossary. You don't necessarily see the flow. Well, and, and you know, maybe, maybe to take that theme of what if we'd done a 30 minute or one hour introductory, hey, here are the terms that we're going to be using, or here, here's the pipeline course in an hour. But, right. but I guess we've got, but we've got that in video form. So what really, what probably what we should have done is said, hey, before you arrive for day one, could you please watch this video and prepare questions about the video, something like that. Good, okay. Yeah, that would have yeah. been better. Very good, okay. All right, other, are there other questions that we would like to ask? See, I'm going to look through the retrospective feedback because there That's were what some. I'm doing too. Oh, oh, yes. Okay. One observation was did any of the three of you have difficulty because of a small amount of memory on your computer or a, a unique operating system you're using? Maybe we should check there. Part of me worries that it probably is common to have a computer with four gigabytes of memory. And that I worried, gee, is that enough, et cetera. So, so I, I guess my question that I'm, I think we should hear from each of them is, um, were there hardware or equipment issues that we could have predicted and uh, assisted? For instance, did, did any of you try to use a Chromebook instead of using a, a Windows, Linux, or Mac, or something like that? So Onyinye, did you have any hardware equipment issues that we could have, could have helped with or could have predicted in advance? Uh, no, uh, I used my Mac and everything worked, worked fine for me. Okay. All right, and Esther, likewise for you, were there, if I remember right, you had a, you, you reported challenges restarting Jenkins, which in fact may be, may just be a, a Jenkins bug. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, I, I had that issue, but then I started to restart Jenkins using the Jenkins.exe file. So uh, whenever I run that uh, Jenkins.exe restarts, it just restarted Jenkins. So I didn't have that issue anymore and okay. then i think uh, another issue that i had was logging into jenkins so when i tried to log in the first time it gave me this invalid logon error and i i followed i tried to follow the online help the the help that was in the documentation because there was a link to in case i got anyone gets that error so i was trying to follow it and then there was this setting that was missing in my laptop it's I um I just have found out online that it's usually missing in Windows 10 Home. I think it's a um, local security group or something. It was missing, so I had to run. I had to start searching for a solution, and then I found this bad script online, 
and I ran it on my system and then I restarted and then the option popped up and so I was able to continue. Okay, and, and so there is a place where we probably should advise developers. So you were a Windows-based developer and you use the MSI to do an installation and we should probably guide developers that you that's that it's better for a developer on Windows to use the WAR file to do the installation rather than the MSI because of permission problems that come. That's a good one. Thank you. All right. So guide okay. developers okay. on Windows and it oh go ahead. No, no, I was saying okay. I was I was oh. agreeing with you to install. So there, there's a piece of the install experience. Meg and Kristen and I do not spend a, the majority of our development time on, on Windows. I, I run on Windows a lot, but, but it's not my development platform. So Windows to install from war, not MSI. And the issue is permissions issues. Okay, Cynthia, same question to you. Were there hardware or you had mentioned um, internet issues. Were there other hardware or equipment issues that we might have predicted or helped you with? Um, no, but uh, I was going to say maybe adding, because uh, uh, so I had an error where I needed to like set the environment variables like in the Java path, maybe that would have been better to specify that in the in the steps, like in the task, um, so that maybe another maintenance might face the same error. Might, um, yeah. Hmm. Good. Okay. So in that case, the the tasks didn't have enough detail for you to be successful with the with that the next step. Good. Okay. Very good, thank you. Other questions? Uh, none for me. Okay. I, I think I think we're set, at least for me, we're set with questions. Thanks for your feedback. You are welcome to continue providing feedback in the retrospective document. Encourage it. Thank you very much. Um, were we going to talk about what's next? We are. Yeah, okay. so that's what I was going to go to I next. was trying to see if you were about to hang up. <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope. I was going to okay. talk about what's next. So um, I think... Oh, so go ahead, Onyinye. I wanted to ask, uh, the remaining open to request what's what's the expectation and, uh... good questions yeah so so what happens what happens to the remaining open pull requests right yeah and and that's i think that's a good question for what's what's on what's next for us so let, let's talk through that and let's take that as the first question. I think what we need to do is more reviews of the uh, open pull requests, right? If they haven't already been reviewed and approved, uh, Mark, Oleg, Kristen, and Meg persuade the um, maintainers to merge. And, and then Angelique. Oh, and Angelique, right, right, exactly. And then after merge, uh, we watch, watch that, watch them or see that they are released. Now there's a step in here that, that I like to do in addition to that, which is mark, build, private copies 
of the plugins with all pull requests merged include in his test image so that the plugins are available to others. So for example, Esther has, I think five or six pull requests submitted to the one she was working on, or maybe it was Cynthia, one of the two, uh, or Onyinya, I know yours does with Artifactory. And the idea is what I'll do is I'll build all of those pull requests together into a single copy of the plugin and put it in my test environment so that I'm using it day in and day out. So I'm just using it regularly. That helps me persuade the writer, or per persuade the maintainers, because I can say, hey, I'm using this, I've started using it on this day and it's behaving, behaving well in this way. So Onyine, does that provide you an answer to the what happens to the remaining pull requests or did you have more questions? Well, that's okay, that's fine, thank you. Okay. So we've still got a number of pull requests left to merge and review. So we'll, the, the mentors will continue working on that. Um, We'll have feedback on those discussions, and ultimately, the goal is to get them into the into the content and merged, into the plugins and merged. Now, in addition, I'd like to submit a blog post um, proposing to summarize the results. I'm I'm intensely proud of what you've accomplished. I can't tell you how proud I am. Yes, we placed. We placed five people, and I think only two of you had previous uh, Java experience. And so quite a, what a treat to see all the progress that you made and the ways that you added, added to the Jenkins project, and I hope learned something yourselves. So- Yes. Yeah, I, I, I I've, learned, I've learned a lot. Great. Okay, um, and I'll submit that blog post. Look for a draft of the blog post, probably even before tomorrow morning's closing session. Uh, I'd, I'd love to have your reviews on it. I don't, it may be Monday before I actually get it published, but I'll try to get it written later today. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah, that's fine. Thanks. Great. Any, oh, oh, and I, I had several other points in terms of things that, things that we will ask for next time. We'll be more systematic about it, right? All sorts of things in terms of how to make this process work well. So anything else we should discuss today before we conclude? Or Meg, Meg, were there other things that you needed? No, just to say what a wonderful group this was. I think it was fabulous. Oh, I know what I was going to say also for if anybody is interested in continuing the um, should we give them the link to Cloudbees University, Mark? Oh, yes. Yeah, that's self -paced, good. The, it's a little late. The self-paced training is uh, always there, always available to anybody um, at no charge. Yeah, actually, and there are there are several self-paced training courses, um, so I'll I'll happily put those into the document, and and you can choose because CloudBees offers several, the Linux Foundation offers one, um, Lambda Testing offers one or more. Uh, there are several others that that if you're interested in them, you are welcome to to use them. And to clarify, okay. this Slack channel is staying open for the foreseeable future, right? Correct, right. I don't see any reason to close this, this particular channel. If, if it goes idle, if we find it's not helping us, they, we may then close it. But for now, we're gonna leave it open. Okay, yeah. 
Okay, Sorry, Cynthia, say that again. Oh, okay. I thought Anya was going to start. Uh, I was going to ask, uh, what if someone wants to be involved more on the technical side? So um, what can we do? Like, so that means we have to take that course first. Yeah, I'm not sure about the next step for that. Oh, good. No, if you want to be more involved, no course required, you're welcome to. You're welcome to take the course to help your skills, but all you need to do is keep doing what you're doing, and and that's that's great involvement already. I think is she asking if she wanted to do something other than continuing working on the steps reference? Ah, if she I wanted see. to contribute to Jenkins, um, other is that right, Cynthia? That you yeah, like continue they continue to work on Jenkins, but not the steps reference. Yeah, like the technical site, like more of Java and. Ah, sure. So, so that, that's let's put that in as a question because I think I think we've got some good answers. So, what if I want to be more involved in the technical details, right? In technical. So, so as an example, Cynthia, if you'd like to be involved in helping with the Jen development of the Jenkins Git plugin, I maintain that. I would I would love to have extra help uh, if and there are other maintainers like me who are similarly interested in having people help them. So you could choose one that's interesting and ask that maintainer, may I help you? Uh, if you ask me, the answer will be yes. If you if you say oh, I'm not interested right. in Git, go ahead, Kristen. Uh, also, like sometimes if you're just looking around or um, there, there are sometimes problems inside of the Jenkins Jira that are tagged as like newbie problems or mm -hmm. things that are easier to tackle. Um, sometimes if you go to the individual plugins, um, you can see that they have GitHub issues. They, some, some plugins use it. It's again, because it, it is open source and Jenkins is very permissive. You, the individual, it's up to the individual maintainers to say how they track their issues. So it could be in one or the other. Um, I think a lot of people are using GitHub issues now but you can go there and then sometimes they're tagged with um, good for beginners and you can just kind of work on it and submit the patch or submit a pull request. And um, that's a good way to get started as well. Um, there's sometimes individual tools that need help too. So um, reviewing feel free other PRs, to, reviewing and testing other PRs. Yeah. Is another, um, Mark, are, yes. are, have you all seen the resources that are on the Jenkins IO page? For oh, new contributors and right. that be interesting. Do you want to even share and show them? Yeah, that's a very good one. So new because there are there are office hours available, I believe, and right. Yeah. So let's here. I'll open that up and share it on screen. So here we go. Right. That's a really good point about the office hours, Meg. Too, because like there's different special interest groups for different tasks. So even if you go and you you can just sit in the meeting and listen. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want to feel like you want to say anything or just to kind of like learn about it and depending on what they're doing that meeting they'll be talking about different problems just to kind of get involved like to get started with figuring out what else is happening in Jenkins. And most people this is a really nice most of them are very happy to have a newbie there who says could you tell me what you mean by that and they'll happily explain it and bring you in so. Yeah so so here's the page that Meg was referencing earlier. This is the, what if I want to help more? And we have several different areas where if you'd like to help more here, then Kristen referenced this page. Let me bring it up. Let's see, I need to. So Kristen referenced this page, which is the friendly issues page. So in this table that you see here of core, git plugin, warnings ng, each of these issues has been tagged as friendly for someone who is a first time contributor. Now they, they commonly require Java skills. So it's assumed that you're interested in learning Java and willing to work with Java, but that's the kind of thing that's needed. Or, and in the case of warnings ng, it's also got some JavaScript in it. So, so those newbie friendly 
these friendly issues and I've embedded the link to that into the, into the retrospective document. Then Kristen also mentioned friendly issues inside GitHub and there you have to go to the individual thing, but let's look at friendly issues on the Jenkins documentation site. So here we would look for let's see, good first issue. And here is a set of documentation things that are good first issues. And it's pretty common for plugins that are using GitHub to track issues that this good first issue is what they'll use to flag this is a good choice for someone who's a first time contributor. Kristen, is, is that what you were? Yeah, is there something equivalent to that for non documentation? Uh, it is the same thing, actually. Yeah. So okay. let's look at. Let's look at, let's take the Jenkins configuration as code plugin. So let's go wow. look at it. So configuration as code. And this is one that uses GitHub issues. And now if we look here, good first issue. So here are three good first issues. One is rework the readme. Another one is create a developer guide. And another one is clean up the obsolete terminology that's in the demonstrations and the documentation. So does that illustrate well enough, Meg? Yeah, I, I think, um, question for Cynthia and the others. Yeah, thank you. This was really helpful. Great. You are welcome in any area of Jenkins. Yeah, thank you for this. Yeah, so let me put a link to that into our into those notes so that if you need to refer back to it later, it's available. So it was, where is our notes? Huh, I've misplaced my notes. There we go, got them, okay. New contributor page at there and then GitHub issues good first issue like jcask good first issues all right and, and as I'm actually just thinking about this too another place you might be able to find some good first issues is if you look at the google summer code project page um they have so those are actually, if you're interested next year, unfortunately, the period of submission and stuff has ended already for this year. But next summer, if you're a student, I'm not sure if any of y'all are students, but there's a chance to be able to participate in Google Summer of Code. Um, but from those pages, you can sometimes also get to good first issues or good good ideas of things to help with. So <laughs> yeah, that's, like those might that's... be some also technical pieces, but yeah. Right, uh, good point. Uh, every we don't accept a project idea unless it has right. good first issues as one of its mandatory things that's included. Wow. So, just right. <laughs> there might be a couple other ways you can see some technical tasks if you're looking for other things. But. Right. So yeah. here in the project ideas. And that's in each idea. So good, very good, excellent. Anything else before we conclude for today? Um, okay, can you hear me? Yes. Um, I just want to really, really appreciate um, all the mentors for the time, for your time and uh, the sections we had, the mentorship, the corrections and everything, like the journey was, was worth it. And um, this experience, it's, it's something I would really like to have again, yeah. Because uh, I was exposed to so many things. I learned practically everything. It's my first time of contributing. And um, it was it was so cool. So I really appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yes, sincerely. Was... Agreed. <laughs> uh -huh.
what a treat it's been uh, really truly <laughs> thank you thank you to all of you wonderful i hope we'll all be crossing paths with you again oh, yeah, oh. So yes, definitely. <laughs> actually well and one more reminder um i'm preparing a talk proposal for devops world and would love to have and it will be remote this year so i would love to have the three of you if you're willing be part of that talk so I'll, I'll send you comments on, on how I think we should do it, et cetera, because I think it's, it's fun to have talks where you say, hey, this is our experience and this is what went well and this is what didn't go well. And so, so I, will, I will be sure that you're copied on that so you're aware of me proposing to ha and have you join me as part of a talk. Yeah, that's Thank you. Thanks. All right. Great. I think that's it. Anything else before we conclude? Good for me. All right. Well, I'm good. Happy. It's been a very fun April. <laughs> it has. Indeed. Well, it's yep. it's been very, very busy. Thank you very much. I know we've got more pull requests to re review. We've got more work to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.